Hey folks, welcome to another video, hopefully very, very quick. So, when chatting to folks, I noticed that people don't really know how to explain what's the point of async awaiting in the ASP.NET Core application. And this is a topic that I already talked in the past, like four years ago, I guess. But it's like a one hour and a half video, so I want to just streamline that explanation to the basics so that uh, we, we don't need to go super far, but from a high level, just understand why do we use this? Because we are polluting the code with async await tasks everywhere. It needs to be a good reason. We can just accept that we need to do that without knowing why. So let's take a quick look on the why we do this. So quick note before starting, this will be a very high level explanation. It's just to get this knowledge going. But if you're interested in Going deeper, I advise you to check out Stephen Cleary's There is no thread post. This is great. And I will, of course, link this in the video description. Also, not exactly the same thing, but David Fowler has a sync guidance doc on GitHub. So also a good thing. And if you really want to go deep, uh, .netos has an async expert course. I haven't done it, but given the people who created the course, I'm expecting it to be great. So with that out of the way, let's get to it. So when I ask what's the point of a sync await, and particularly like in interviews, I ask this kind of thing. I hope it's not a super vague question, but I would expect folks, at least the more senior ones, to know this. And then I show the show them this code. Like we have a this is a binal loop APIs endpoint, and I have like get product by ID. We get the ID and the DB context. We use find and you notice no async stuff. So just a check product is no, it's not. We return okay and the TTO and all of that. And then I show you, show the alternative, which I can hide myself for a bit, although nothing really interesting there. And it's exactly the same thing, but now it's async and I use find async method on DB context and the rest of the code is the same. Just results okay, product TTO, stuff like that. So so the question I put after that is, so in case of this code, there, is there any advantage of going with the async route or not? And a lot of times folks just say no, because I'm not doing anything in parallel. And that, that's the point of async is that we could make a ton of requests. If we want to do five requests on the same, same request or queries or whatever, I could do it there in parallel. And while it's not wrong, it's correct that we can do that but even without that use case it is useful to use async and let's see why so let's start with the get the sync version of get so uh, again in the original video I did a long time ago I used a big diagram so this time I try to simplify it and put it in a PowerPoint. So let's see if if it's more if it's easier to understand. So let's imagine we have a server. So we have this little box which is the server. We have a database. We eventually have a client C1, which makes a request R1. The server has something called a thread pool, in which we have a bunch of threads for sim for simplicity simplicity's sake. Sorry, uh, I, it's a thread pool with only two threads. And I put little emojis just to make it easier to understand stuff, hopefully. And what happens is we get the request into the server. And now the server allocates a thread from the thread pool to handle that request. So we can then put that request uh, going. And we need to do some processing. So some imagine validation, uh, some initial logic, stuff like that. And then we want to make the, the query to the database. And while we are making the query to the database, uh, while we wait for the database, the thread is just there waiting uh, because we're using the sync version. So then we get a client C2, which makes a request R2. And we have another thread in the thread pool, which can handle it. The same thing happens. It process, does some initial processing, makes a request to the database and waits. 
And now we get client C3, again the same thing, makes a request R3, but then there is no thread in the thread pool. So the thread pool normally has a finite number of threads. It can inject new threads, but it's not like always creating new threads. It has some algorithms to understand if it should or should not create new threads because we can't have infinite threads on the server. They, they are not cheap resources. So for this uh, explanation, let's assume it didn't create new threads. So we only have still two. So the request three will need to wait for the other request to be handled. So it, it's there. Then finally, the database uh, response comes from request R1. It does the other processing. Can finally re return to C1 the, the response. And the thread one goes back to the thread pool. And now the server can allocate thread one to the third request, which now starts doing its thing. and so on, so you get the picture. Now the, the rest of the story is the same all over. Now let's go to the next one. So this is the async version, exactly the same thing. The only difference is it's async and we are awaiting the, the request from the database, the query. So again, we have the server, the database, and client C1, which makes request R1. Same thing, we have the thread pool, Thread one is allocated to request one, and it starts processing stuff, makes a request, the query to the database, and waits. But the difference here is that because we're using the async version, thread one doesn't stick here. Thread one can go back to the thread pool and can handle more stuff. So request R1, it's waiting, but the thread pool is full. And we have client two, request two, and now Thread2 is handling this request, but it could be thread1. So the thread pool will allocate whatever thread uh, it wants. I don't know, maybe there's some logic in there for those kinds of things, or it's a queue or something like that, I don't know. I just know that one of those threads will be allocated to request R2. And it's processing, uh, makes the call to the database, waits, and of course, thread2 also goes back to the thread pool. Then we get client C3, and now when we get to the request 3, it can immediately start processing in this case, but thread 1, again, could be any other thread, but thread 1 starts processing and stuff like that. Imagine that while it's still processing, uh, the database query for request 1 is finished, so it's returned, and now even though R3 is being processed, Thread2 can be allocated to R1, even though it was uh, thread1 who started. So a request can be handled by multiple different threads, depending on what's going on. And then maybe thread2 finishes, returns to client1 the response, and goes back to the thread pool. And the story continues, and thread1 would eventually finish what it, it's doing, it call the database, blah, blah, blah. So that's it. As we saw, we were able to handle more requests than the number of threads we have. While if we don't use this approach, the async approach, even for code as simple as we saw, the find async, the, where is that? Even code as simple as this, which seems, yeah, simple. But the second one, just by doing that, we're now able to handle much more requests on the server when there is I.O. If all the requests are CPU bound, this won't make a difference because we'll need to, the, the, the thread pool threads will be busy handling it. But if it's a lot of I.O., which many applications are, a lot of queries to the database, HTTP requests to other services, gRPC, sending messages, stuff like that. So there's a lot of communication. So in those applications, async is just, even if you're not doing yourself anything in parallel, it's a game changer. And that's why we put up with having this pollution in our code, because the, the other approach in terms of code was cleaner. 
So we really need a good uh, reason to go this way. So let me go back there and let's wrap this up with some quick things. But as I was saying, yeah, async await and friends are useful even when you're not explicitly parallelizing things, as we saw. So because the, the things on the server are parallel, even if our code for handling one request doesn't do anything in parallel, but the server itself is doing things in parallel. You need to remember that. And having this uh, thing where threads can handle more requests than the number of threads because we don't need to block them waiting for I.O. This is great. And of course, there's much more to the topic and go check out those links in the description that I mentioned. There's much, much more. I just wanted to focus on like the basic. When we have such a simple request, why do we use this await? And hopefully this video is helpful for that. And just a side note, because folks like to talk about the parallelized stuff. Yeah, but be aware of parallelizing like EF core stuff, because the DB context is not thread safe. So you can just go doing a lot of things over the, the DB context in parallel. So be aware of that. But that's just a side note. Uh, it wasn't the point of the video. So hope it was useful. You know the drill. Please uh, drop feedback. And if it was useful, drop a like, uh, the subscribes, and share with folks that you feel don't know what what's the point of async await and stuff like that. It's much more than just doing task run to do things in parallel. But yeah, hopefully it was useful and I'll see you in the next one. See you.